Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Photography Tips and Tricks, the show for gear, tips, tricks, and anything photography. I'm Pete Collins and I've got with me the one and only Mia McCormick. <laughs> Mia, how are you doing? I am the one and only. I don't think the there's one. any other Mia McCormicks out there anywhere in the world. Well listen, I'm excited. We're going to do a show today about video using your DSLR and Mia is the one that teaches about that because she's got some classes coming up on Kelby One about that very thing. And so if you want to get started with DSLR video, we're going to give you the essentials that you need to get started. Yeah, we're just going to go over the real basics here. So if you've never uh, shot video with a DSLR before, or if you're looking to just kind of get into it, these are the basic things that you need to know. And we're going to start right off the bat with camera settings. The good news is that some of the settings are going to work just like they do for photography. Some of them are going to be a little bit different, and then some of them are going to be all new, brand new settings together. So it's going to be a few more things to remember. Aperture and ISO, let's, we'll start with the easy stuff. Okay. That works just like it does for photography. So if you want to shoot with a nice shallow depth of field, it's going to give your footage a really cinematic, beautiful quality to it. You want a nice wide, fast aperture. So f1.4, 1.5, 1.8, it's going to look beautiful. ISO, similar. If you're outside, you're going to be down near ISO 100. And then when you move inside, that's when you're going to start to bump it up. But the more you bump it up, the noisier, the grainier your footage is going to look. So those things work the same. Shutter speed works a little bit differently. For video, shutter speed works in conjunction with something called frame rate. Now the frame rate is how many frames per second your camera will take and then stitch together to make video. So we're going to go ahead into the menu system here. I'm working with a Canon 5D Mark III. It's going to be a little bit different on every different camera that you use. Nikon works a little bit differently. But we're going to go ahead into the menu system here and we're going to look under the movie settings. So you're going to find where in the camera menu are we're in the camera menus your movie settings are so here on the Canon 5D you're gonna look right there where it says movie record size and there are a couple of there's two different numbers and then a setting at the end the first number is the resolution the second is the frame rate and then the last one has to do with compression which we're not gonna go over here but that second number is your frame rate and a very popular frame rate to shoot at on a DSLR is 24 frames per second that's the speed that film is shot at so when you combine that with a nice nice wide aperture, your footage is going to look beautiful. It's going to remind you of something that you've seen on the big screen. Mm -hmm. A couple of other frame rates are 30 frames per second, and then on some DSLRs, you're going to see the option for 60 frames per second, which you'll see right over here if you drop your resolution down on the 5D. 60 frames per second is perfect for shooting high speed action footage. or if you want to slow your footage down in post. So a lot of even the most basic editing software out there gives you the option to slow your footage down. So if you're taping your son at his little league game and you actually capture that moment right when the bat hits the ball and you get it back and you're on your computer and you're like, oh, if I could just put this in slow-mo. If you try to do that at 24 frames per second, it's going to look like it's going to stutter a bit. It's not going to look really smooth. At 60 frames per second, it's going to be smooth and beautiful and you're going to love it. So once you decide what frame rate you want to work with, then you set your shutter speed. And the rule for that is you always kind of double it. So if you're working at 24 frames per second, your shutter speed should be set to 1 48th or 1 50th of a second. 30 frames per second, you want to set it to 1 60th of a second. And if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, you want to go 1 1 20th or 1 25th of a second. And you want to lock that in. The reason why is because that's the shutter speed that movement is going to look most natural at in your video. If you bump it up too high from there, your movement's going to start to get a real staccato look to it. It's going to look jerky, almost like time-lapse photography. And if you slow it down, a lot of DSLRs actually won't let you <laughs> slow it down past that. But if you do slow it down, you're going to get that motion blur just like you would get with a still, uh, a still photo if you were trying to take something that was moving too fast. So your hand's going to move through the screen and then it's going to kind of follow behind you, right? It's going to be very dreamy looking. So once you set that shutter speed in, you want to lock it there and that's a setting that you don't want to touch. So the very last setting that we want to look at, let's go back to our menu, is that first number there, that's the resolution. So you can see that the 5D Mark III has a couple of them to choose from there. I recommend you always going with the highest one, which is the 1920 by 1080. And the reason is because 
resolution is usually dictated by where your video is going to be seen. So if you ever want to show your footage on uh, HDTV, or if you're going to put it on a website that allows you to bump your settings up to 1080, you're covered. All your bases are covered. Whereas if you shoot at something a little bit lower, you might have a problem when it comes. It's not going to look as clean or as crisp or as clear as it would at 1080. The only time that you may want to dump your resolution down a little bit, may want to touch it down, is if you're looking to capture more footage. Because if you bump it down to 1280, then it's going to open up more time on your media card. You'll be able to shoot for a little bit longer. Wow. So the things you need to realize that is different than taking regular still photography is you got to look for that shutter speed, how fast it's going to grab the frame rate mm -hmm. and all that stuff, and it's going to determine the look of your video. I just thought you just pick it up and you hit that video record button and you go. <laughs> and that's why when you bring it back, you look at it and you're like, what's wrong here? Nothing. These people look really jerky. What, what did I do wrong? That's awesome. Now, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, is there any essential gear you need to have to be able to help with capturing good video? Absolutely. Because we've seen bad video out there. <laughs> there is one piece of gear for sure that you need to have, and I'll talk about it when we come back. Okay, we'll be right back after this break. Hey, Corey, we're going to that new pizza place across the street after work. You in? I really wish I could, man. I'm under deadline with this book. I gotta get it done. You're a machine, Corey. You're a machine! Well, you have no idea. step-by-step -step Photoshop tricks, type effects, extracting, textures, Hollywood effects, and really badass 3D. Photoshop Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers, Volume 2. Your mind will be composited away. All right, welcome back. Now, as you can see, Mia's brought in a tripod for us, and you know, it just looks like a regular tripod. What's so important about this kind of tripod? Well, there's something that might look a little bit different, and that is the fluid head that's on this tripod, right? Because it looks a little different than it, what you go out and take stills It looks but it doesn't look that much different. Tell me why is this different and what people need to look for. Okay, there are a couple of different locking mechanisms that, on this that unlock something called a pan and a tilt. So the biggest difference between video and, and stills is that stills is actually freezing action, right? Well, with video, you're tracking action. So you need something that's going to be able to keep up with that. And that's what these unlock. The ability to pan back and forth. It's that horizontal movement across the horizon there. And tilt up and down. And the reason why it's called a fluid head is because you see how smooth that movement is. See how it's that nice, smooth, continuous tilt and pan back and forth. And you have this arm here off the side that you can see that's going to allow you to make those movements so you're not actually like trying to hold the head in movement. You have this nice arm. That's what's going to allow you to keep up with action footage. That's what's going to allow you to keep up with the moving subjects in your video. And it's a world of difference than trying to shoot with a ball head. Right? Well, I was going to say, I could probably get away with that with a ball head if I wasn't picky. I would try to do that. But as soon as I put it into the computer, I would think, oh, I did it pretty smoothly. The ball head is not going to give you that same motion, and it's going to be picked up on the camera, right? Exactly. The last thing that you're going to find on all fluid head tripods is a bubble level. because. Unlike photography, video is never really shot on an angle. It just looks really weird when all of the, you know, the horizontal lines are moving diagonally through your frame. It doesn't look as aesthetic at all. It's not an artistic look to it. So you really want to level your tripod every time you take it out and shoot with it. Wow, that's pretty cool. 
Okay, that's the one thing that everybody should buy, but if you were going to do... Must have. Must have, if you were going to buy the next thing after that. And we've kind of had a debate about whether we should we should say this or not, but you convinced me that this is the next product, so tell me what it is. It really depends on how you're using your video. If you know that you are going out and taking video and every time you bring it back, you have a set music bed that you're going to put underneath it, then you're fine. But the other thing that's the biggest difference between still photography and video is audio. You actually get to hear what's going on. You're not just seeing a piece of action frozen, you get to hear what's happening. So back to my analogy about a baseball game, you know, there's only so many times that you can watch your son run home to the Rocky Victory song before See, it gets old. We argued about this. I'm <laughs> like, no, people just want to capture good footage and then they've already got the soundtrack in their head, you know, of the kid making it around the bases, the soundtrack and all that stuff. And, and that works great until Grandpa sitting next to you says something that is so emotional and you're going to be like, yes, I was rolling and you're going to bring it back and you're going to put it in your computer and you're going to hear everything. The person next to you eating popcorn, you're going to hear the loudspeaker, you're going to hear people clapping, you're going to hear everything but what Grandpa said because the microphones on these cameras are notoriously horrible on DSLRs. They sound tinny, they're omnidirectional, so they pick up everything except for the one thing that you want to hear. I just wish you got a little more excited about this. <laughs> well, and, and let, me go, let, me, let me convince you even further because you'll start to shoot video at family events, barbecues, weddings, birthdays, and the minute that you're not sitting there pushing that shutter button and you're instead doing this, people know you're taking video. And so just naturally, they start to talk to the camera. And a lot of times you don't really care. They're saying stupid things that you don't really want to hear again. But sometimes they say gems. And again, you're going to think you have it, and you're going to get back, and it's not going to be there. It's just something natural that people start to do. Right. So what you want, the, what I would recommend is a directional microphone that goes on your camera. It slides right into your hot shoe and plugs in. Now, this isn't going to get you, uh, you know, super fantastic clear footage if you're trying to speak to the camera like a reporter in the field. But what it's going to do is it's going to pick up the direction that your lens is pointed. It's going to pick up the audio from that direction in a very clear way so you're going to get great natural sound of what you want instead of everything that's going on you're going to get great natural sound from the direction that your lens is pointed in man i we argued over this and i i didn't believe that this would be the next thing that you choose but once she gave that passion plea i really do believe <laughs> that is a, a great added bonus to this because the, the microphones are notoriously bad on these because they're built to pick up everything and you want to craft your sound and your vision according to what you're filming so that's great. Mia, thank you so much for that. Just You've got a couple classes coming up on Kelby One. I They're going to talk about this very thing, get you started, mm -hmm. and take it a little bit further down the road. We're going to talk about a few more pieces of gear to really perfect your footage, and we're going to go over all of the camera settings. Like you heard me say that there was a setting in here for compression. I'm going to tell you what that means, how it affects your footage. And once you have an understanding of all of those things, that's when you're really going to start to see your footage come together in a way that just looks really beautiful when you display it. Man, that's great. So make sure you keep an eye out for that over on kelby1.com. Speaking of keeping an eye out, we actually have a guest in the studio and I'm trying to really embarrass him, embarrass him by making him the video, I'm not the video, the website to watch. <laughs> if you will go to destructivepixels.com and check out Craig McCormick, same last name now as me. Now we're not here. related. Craig not and I are related. related. This isn't nepotism going on here. <laughs> but Craig is a great landscape photographer. Got some beautiful stuff over there. Make sure you go check out his website. It's destructivepixels.com. Make sure you put an S on pixels because I messed up on that earlier. So destructivepixels.com. Great stuff, Craig. Thank you so much for coming and visiting us today. Great last name. Yes, great last name. Now, finally, our ebook deal for the week. Make sure you go to peachpit.com slash Kelby1 to get 40% off the ebook of the week of the month from peachpit.com. But don't forget to add the code Kelby1 when you're checking out and you can get 40% off a great ebook deal this week over at Kelby1. Well, 
that's kind of about it. Yeah. I love that you're getting us involved with the SLR video. We're going to have to make it photography slash uh, video you. tips yeah, and tricks. Well, there's going to be no, be no stopping you after a while. <laughs> Mia, thank you so much for coming. Yeah. I really do appreciate this, and I think our viewers are really going to like what you have to say about this. And unfortunately, we're going to have to spend some more money and get another tripod. But they're not, it doesn't have to be that expensive. Okay. Uh, this one's a little over $100. It's a Magnus VT4000. It's not, it really, it's not that expensive, but it's essential gear. Oh, and as I got yelled at from over off the set because we're so professional, we can't forget about the contest. So make sure you go over to kelby1.com slash contest and go in there and fill out your name, your information. Make sure you choose PT&T as the show you're watching. And please give us some comments, some questions, some tips, things you'd like for us to cover because this show is about helping you become a better photographer. What do you win this week? Well, look at this. This book magically appeared, and it's called Picture Perfect Posing by Roberto Valenzuela. I love that name. That's a great name. <laughs> Roberto really well. Valenzuela. But great book if you're interested in learning how to pose, get people to pose. If you want to be a poser, there you go right there. <laughs> well, there you go, Mia. Once again, you had to endure time with me, but thank you so much. I'm sure our viewers are going to love this episode with you teaching them more about DSLR video. My pleasure. Guys, thank you so much. We will see you next time here on Photography Tips and Tricks. See you next time. Take care.